Hello everyone, it is Dark Sticker here again. Welcome back for another video. Happy Saturday to all of you. I hope you're all having a tremendous weekend. So today, I am playing Martian Boo's Blessed Shadow Ox Shaman deck. There is a story behind this deck. So, after a long hard day of work, I was chilling out in front of Netflix in the evening. But I also had my iPad with me, so I was playing some Hearthstone as well, so I was multitasking. And at one point, I got a little bit frustrated with the ladder. Uh, There's a lot of druids, and um, I just decided to take a little break. I went on Twitter, and I started looking for Shadow Walk decks. Um, that's what I do for stress relief. I go on social media and start looking for new Shadow Walk decks that I can play. And I found this deck on Martian Boo's Twitter feed. And usually, if you have been watching any of my Shadow Walk videos over the last year, you'll know that I mostly play Reno Shadow Walk Shaman. And so I thought, okay, this deck is not a Reno deck. There are cards that have got two copies, but there is healing in the deck. There's Life Drinker, Tidal Surge, Armor Vendor. So I thought, why not give this deck a try? I'll try a couple of games with the deck, see what happens. Tried a couple of games, won those games. Played a few more games, won those games. And so I believe I went from, what, Diamond 3 to Legend, winning most of my games with the deck, uh, which was really surprising. Uh, the MVP card for me was Cornelius Rome. The card draw really, really helped in certain circumstances, and particularly if Cornelius Rome could not be answered by the opponent. It was just a constant draw engine for me with resources just coming into hand. And if you could play those resources out in good time, uh, that's pretty good. Otherwise, you overdraw, you mill yourself. Um, ice fishing was obviously amazing too for me. But all in all, really surprising results. I, I was not expecting to have got to Legend with this deck, but I did. And I got lucky. I drew some of my answers when I really needed them. I got my ice fishing when I really needed it against Aggro Druid. Uh, yeah, so many Aggro Druids. The majority of opponents I faced were playing Aggro Druid, and then there were a few Pirate Warriors. That was pretty much my meta on the grind to Legend. But to get to Legend in style, I had to craft one card in golden form. That's right. The Lurker Below. So beautiful in golden form. And then Golden Lurker Below. Beating up Aggro Druids. Look at that animation. So incredible. Yeah, that was dust well spent. No regrets there whatsoever. This is the game to legend. Oh, my good friend there, Agrius, otherwise known as Dusty Scales, coming online. I believe he was my good luck charm in this game, even though he wasn't spectating. Just him coming online whilst I'm playing Hearthstone seems to bring me good luck sometimes. And it is a great thing to see that my opponent uh, in the final game before Legend is not a pirate warrior, an odd hunter, or an even lock. No, it's an evolve shaman. I absolutely love that. Absolutely love that. So, we do have ice fishing in hand. The question is, when do we use it? I want the opponent to commit as much as possible to the board. This is a pretty big board. Okay, that's pretty nasty. Um, I think we need to use Ice Fishing here. We need to draw a combo, we need to use our combo. 
Yeah, they know what's coming. They know what's up. So we get a bit of extra value out of this with the rat. So what is better than the Flurgle Toxwin combo? What's better is the Dirty Rat Flurgle Toxwin combo. So they're going to go for one last evolve here. Okay. Pay attention, class. Oh, look at Seed. That felt like it was a bit premature. But I'll take it. Because that has taken me to Legend. Okay. Let's look at a couple of full games with this deck now. After I've got to Legend. So, this Warlock, more than likely, is going to be Evenlock. What am I looking for here? I'm looking for Flurgle and Toxfin combo. That's going to be key. The idea is to play Flurgle Toxfin at the right time to wipe out a board of big threats. The problem with Evenlock, though, is that they can simply generate more threats or play more threats from hand. They tap so much, they generate so many cards in hand, and if you clear one big board, they can just refill the board straight away. And then you're kind of screwed. So, I don't see this deck as being favoured against even Lock. But let's see how we fare here. What big threats are they going to play first? As we play our one attack, no, now two attack armor vendor. Unfortunately, yeah, it's not going to match up very well against these big threats that are coming down. Okay. Um, I'm going to do something interesting here. We're going to devolve this board. Oh. Well, that's bad for us. <laughs> We've just devolved uh, a five attack minion into a King Crush. Hmm. However, we've taken some attack power off the board. There was 13 attack on that last board. There's only 11 on this board. I mean, it's not that much better, but I wanted to see what would happen. And now I realise that devolving a 10 cost minion is bad. It's very bad. So we could have played our ice fishing on that last turn. We could have played Flurg Flurgle Toxfin. But I just want to wait it out a bit. I want to see what else will get committed to this board. And then I'll consider Flurgle Toxfin. We are afraid, though, of one particular card, and that is the Battle Master. That is scary. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, that is going to make Ice Fishing impossible this turn. And so, we clear part of the board. Couldn't clear the full board with our combo, so we compromise with half the board. Yes, the golden! Strike. Look at below! But unfortunately, as feared, Battle Master nearly killing us. Hmm. So we have to go for Flurgal Toxman here, we have no choice. Alright, goodbye board, and hello face. Lurker below says hello. Um, 
Hmm, we're at full health. That is not good. But we have the board. And most importantly, Flurgal is still alive. Because now we can play Zola on the Toxfin, replay the Toxfin, clear the board, go face. This is beautiful. And I've remembered to target the Toxfin with the Toxfin. Okay. They need to clear most of my board here. But even if they do, I have Life Drinker and Macaw. So that's six damage that I've got available to me from hand. Assuming I have space on the board uh, to play those two cards. The question is, does Evenlock run any kind of significant AoE or board clear? I forget. <laughs> and I don't play even lock. So, can't quite remember what they have available to them. I've been facing too many aggro druids and pirate warriors that even lock has kind of faded from my memory somewhat. Have they gone to sleep? Should we try and uh, <laughs> wake them up? Oh, is this a rage quit? Have they rage quit? Have they closed the Hearthstone client? Have they uninstalled Hearthstone? I assume they are ranting and raving now about Flurgal Toxfin being a menace on the ladder. I suspect they will go to Twitter and call for Flurgal Toxfin to be nerfed. Oh, I really wanted to play the Macaw there. No board space, though. Board locked. Damn it. <laughs> Alright. So this is the real test. Pirate Warrior. Now, on my grind to legend, I faced a couple of Pirate Warriors, and I was able to get Goloka Crawler value with the Brilliant Macaw. And those plays set me up beautifully at the start of the game and essentially won me the game in the long run. But there is no Goloka Crawler here and there is no Macaw. Hmm. I do have Flurgle though, just no Toxfin to go with it, but let's see how we go. In a box? Oh, pirate stuff. Okay, one pirate, two pirates, oh, that's it, just two, okay. Could have been worse, could have been worse. Now, do note, we have double tidal surge in hand, that is going to be good for cannons that come down, maybe. Earth Revenant. Earth Revenant will clear one health pirates, potentially. Devolve could be good against the likes of South Sea Captain. Although I have a better target in mind for Devolve, actually. Oh, hello, Cannon. Okay. Going wide here, somewhat. So, we're not going to devolve this board, we are going to Tidal Surge, the cannon. Back to full health. Wonderful. Alright, sure. Oh! Going even wider on the board. Oh wow, Risky Skipper. I'm curious about Risky Skipper. You see, the pirates are low health on that board, right? 
feels like a gamble, playing a risky skipper. Because now, you know, I'm going to firstly kill off a couple of those pirates, and secondly, lower the health of the other pirates. So now if they play a minion, their pirates die, so they've got to trade their pirates in to the 2-6. Or not? Huh? Shouldn't they have traded those pirates in first? How bizarre! And the Earth Revenant doesn't die, it's hilarious. Oh god, another Risky Skipper. Are you sure that's smart? Are you sure that that's wise? The last Risky Skipper didn't work out. Anyway, Rakara in hand, it's time for the rat. And there we go. Game over. This is what I saved the Devolve for. Ooh, a 2-6 Rumbling Elemental. I could do with one of those. See, my deck is full of Battlecry minions. I, I, I'd quite like a Rumbling Elemental in my deck. We're gonna need more gunpowder. But yes, we got lucky with the Dirty Rat. Unfortunately, there was no Macaw value uh, with Goloka Crawler. But it turns out we didn't need it. A lucky, dirty rat pulling Rakara, I believe, is once the game. Blade Storm. Well, that's unfortunate. And I guess this is the benefit of um, running two copies of cards. You're more likely to draw into them. Now that lurker below value was subpar. It was not optimal. But we'll take it. We killed two minions. Sometimes uh, that is all you need. So our pirate warrior opponent with their last stand here. Their last gasp. Oh, hello. Who needs ice fishing? I mean, you can just draw your cards naturally. Goodbye, board. Hello, armor. Oh, and hello, ice fishing. And that should be it. Once again, disappointed. No Goloka Crawler value. But who needs crabs, you know, when you have rats? Alright, ladies and gentlemen, Martian Booze, blessed Shadow Walk Shaman deck. 13,560 dust. This is not a Reno deck, and yet it has worked out incredibly well for me. Going from at least Diamond 3, I think it was, to Legend in one evening, winning most of my games, destroying Aggro Druids, beating Pirate Warriors. Yes, I got very lucky in those games against Aggro Druid. Uh, I drew my Flogal Toxin combo super early, and that allowed me to win multiple times. Against the two Pirate Warriors, or three Pirate Warriors that I faced on the grind to Legend, Good luck, Crawlers came in early for me. So yes, I got lucky. Um, but hey, that's Hearthstone these days, right? If you're playing an off-meta deck, more than anything else, luck, I think, is what determines your success rate. If you're playing a Tier 1 meta deck, you don't really need luck, because you're going to draw consistently a lot of the time, <laughs> and you're going to win. But yes, with an off-meta deck like this, Luck is sometimes the key component to victory, and I got very, very lucky on the grind to Legend. So if you're going to give this deck a try, um, just be aware, it's an off-meta deck. It's not a tier 1 meta deck at all. Uh, if you already have the cards, try this deck out. Tell me what you think in the comments section below. I would be curious to hear your thoughts. Um, just want to 
focus quickly on Brilliant Macaw. So many great battle cries that you can replicate in this deck through the Macaw. Good luck a crawler against the Pirate Warriors. Dirty Rat if you're trying to pull questline rewards from the hand. Armor Vendor for a little bit of extra armor to help you survive. Uh, Life Drinker for a bit of extra healing and damage. Chain Gang, Barista, Lothar. Ooh, Grumble is in this deck. Isn't that interesting? In all of the games that I've played on the Grind to Legend and After Legend, I've not actually had an opportunity to play Grumble. Isn't that fascinating? Um, but yeah, Grumble's in this deck. Oh, and by the way, the Shudderwalk is also in this deck. And that's true. In the absolute majority of the games that I played, I did not even get a chance to play the Shudderwalk. Who needs the Shudderwalk when you've got Flurgle Toxfin, Galoka Crawlers, yeah, and Cornelius Rome. Um, you didn't really see Cornelius Rome do anything in this video, but I can say, hand on heart, on the grind to legend, Cornelius Rome was an absolute legend. Just drawing me board clears, drawing me healing, drawing me everything that I needed to seal out the games. In particular, drawing me Flurgle Toxfin on a few occasions. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you all again very soon for more Wild Mode fun, but until next time, please stay safe, please look after yourselves, and as always, please be good to one another.